Hello everyone. In this video, I want to walk you through the M plus syntax for running a latent class analysis. A few words about this channel. On this channel, I provide weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to latent variable models and often related to the M plus software. So if this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, then please hit the like button as well. So in this uh, video, I want to walk you through the M plus input file for running a latent class analysis. And so here you can see an example of a three class latent class analysis model and how to estimate that. The first thing that we can do in an M plus input file is we can provide a title to the analysis. As you can see here at the top, the title command is fully optional, but it's often useful to include a few keywords so that you know what kind of analysis you ran and this title will also appear in your output file so that when you print out your output or you send it to somebody then um, somebody else will also know what you did in the analysis. What is not optional is the data command. So the data command is required because Mplus needs to know where to find the data to which your latent class model should be fit. And so in this case, my file name is data.dat. If I save my input file in the same directory in which I also have that uh, data file, then Mplus will automatically find it. In the variable name, in the variable command, sorry, we have to first provide the names of the variables in the correct order in which they appear. In this data set, you can see that here the first two variables are age and gender, and then I have um, five variables that are called action, logic, skill, simulation, and driving simulation. Those are items related to a computer game questionnaire that I analyzed here. In this case, I'm analyzing binary items. You could also have items that are ordinal with more than two categories, or you could have continuous variables if you wanted to run a latent profile analysis, and then the whole thing would look very similar. In this case, I have binary items, so they are categorical in nature rather than continuous. So what I'm doing here is I'm running a classical latent class analysis. The next subcommand here in the variable command is also not required. It's the auxiliary command. And the reason why I'm including this auxiliary command here will become clearer later on when I'm going to talk about the save data command at the very end. So hold on until then. And then you'll see what this is good for here in this case. Now, what is um, more typically required is the use variables command in which you specify which items are to be analyzed um, by latent class analysis. So what are the indicators of your latent classes? And so here I'm listing the five items. Note that I'm not listing age and gender because age and gender are not used here to um, analyze the classes or extract the classes, but those classes are just only based on those five items. Furthermore, I'm telling M plus with a categorical subcommand that those same five items are not continuous variables, which is the M plus default, but that these items are ordered categorical. And so they could be binary, like in this case, or they could have more than two categories. As long as they are ordered categorical or ordinal in nature, you would list them under categorical. If they weren't ordered categorical, then you would have to use the nominal statement in M plus rather than the categorical subcommand. So categorical in M plus means these are variables that are either binary, like here, or they are ordered categorical or ordinal. And how does M plus know whether they are binary or ordinal with more than two categories? M plus will automatically determine this from looking at how many values there are on these items. Now, what this does is it tells M plus, um, so to say indirectly, that here we're, we'll be doing a classical latent class analysis. Classical latent class analysis deals with binary or ordinal variables, so with categorical indicators, whereas latent profile analysis would deal with continuous or metrical um, indicators of latent classes. And so if you had 
the case where your indicators of the latent classes were continuous in nature, so metrical response variables, some scores, for example, then you would simply leave out this categorical statement. So this categorical statement basically overrides the M plus default, which would be that the indicators listed under use variables are continuous. And so then if you had continuous indicators, then you would just simply not have that categorical statement. You could also have a mixture of categorical and continuous indicators of latent classes in M+. So some of the items might be binary, some might be ordinal with more than two categories, some might be continuous, and that's fine. Then you would just simply not include the continuous variables in this categorical subcommand, but you would include them in the use variables list. And then M plus would automatically determine that all the variables that are in the use variables list, but not in the categorical list, must be metrical or continuous response variables. And then lastly, also required subcommand and variable for a latent class or latent profile analysis is the classes subcommand. This subcommand is always needed whenever you run some kind of mixture distribution model in M+. So any kind of mixture model, whether it be a classical latent class analysis, a latent profile analysis, a growth mixture model, another type of factor mixture model, a regression mixture model, or whatever kind of mixture model, item response theory mixture model, like the mixed rush model or something like that, would always require you to include this classes subcommand. With this classes subcommand, you specify two things in M+. One is the name of the latent class variable, because M+, uses uh, or a assumes that there is a latent class variable that needs to be named. And so we can pick that label. In this case, I labeled this variable as C, and that's arbitrary, so to say. And then the second thing that we're doing with this subcommand is we are telling M plus how many classes are to be extracted in our analysis. In this case, I want to estimate a three-class latent class analysis model, so I'm putting the three here in parentheses. Now, typically, when we do exploratory latent class analysis, we try out different numbers of classes and then compare the models in terms of their fit and other criteria. And so then we would have a separate input file or separate syntax file for uh, a two-class model, a three-class model, four-class model, and so on. And then we would run each one separately and then look at the output and compare fit statistics to find out which solution we like best. So this is only, so say, one input for the three-class model. If you also wanted to look at a four-class model, you'd have to um, have a separate input file for that as well. Next is the analysis command. And in the analysis command, we have to include the subcommand type equals mixture in M+, to tell M+, that this is a mixture distribution model. Now, it's kind of a little bit redundant, this subcommand, because we already told M plus that we are extracting classes. So, but nonetheless, M plus will still require you to include this type equals mixture subcommand so that it's clear that this will be a mixture distribution analysis. Again, this subcommand would be included whenever you extract classes, whether it be latent class analysis, latent profile analysis, growth mixture modeling, other types of mixture models. It's all type mixture in M plus. The next two subcommands are, in some sense, optional. Um, the starts and the st iteration subcommands, because M plus has certain defaults for the number of starting values to um, use for the analysis of mixture models and also for the number of iterations that are used. However, for um, complex class models, often those defaults for the number of starting values to be used in the analysis may not be sufficient because mixture models are prone to local maxima. And so when you don't run a sufficient number of random starting values and compare different solutions, then you might end up with a so-called local maximum solution, which may not be a valid solution. I have a separate video on that topic that you can find in the description if that is something that interests you more. Here I only want to um, mention that the setting that I chose here with 1,000 starting values in the first stage of the iteration in, of the optimization and 100 um, starting value sets in the second step is a very conservative 
kind of setting that should do the trick for a three-class model. And usually a three-class model also isn't that problematic in terms of local maxima. In most situations, it becomes more of an issue when you have four, five, six, seven, eight classes or something like that. And so then you want to be sure that you have enough starting values. So what M plus does here is it starts with, or it will begin with 1,000 uh, sets of starting values and go through these for a certain number of iterations, namely 50. And then out of the 1,000, it'll pick the ones that resulted in the best solution after 50 iterations in the initial stage. And it'll pick the 100 best ones and then um, work with those for uh, more iterations and then give you in the output file a list of all these 100 final stage log likelihood values that are associated with those 100 best starting value sets from the first stage. And then you can see whether your best log likelihood value was replicated uh, for several of these 100 final stage starting value sets. And that's a good sign when you have the best log likelihood value then replicated. I'll talk more about this in a separate video when I show the output file for a latent class model. Next is the plot command. The plot command is also optional. However, it's useful if you want to take a look at the profiles that result from latent class analysis. Namely, with classical latent class analysis, you get a profile of the conditional response probabilities for each item. And then you can see, so see how these classes differ in terms of their patterns of response probabilities. When you have latent profile analysis, what would be plotted would be the means of the indicators in the different latent classes. When you have classical latent class analysis, you get a plot of the conditional response probabilities. And so this shows how you can um, obtain a plot in which the items will be on the x-axis and on the y-axis you'll have the conditional response probabilities and so then you can see the profiles of those classes in the graph. And that's useful when you compare different class solutions, for example, two-class model, three-class model, four-class model. You can look at these profiles and you can very easily see um, what the class solutions look like, what they differ, how they differ from each other. The TEC10 output is also something that you don't need to look at. However, I find it useful with latent class analysis because it gives you additional um, local model fit information. It um, gives you specifically residual statistics um, for response pattern frequencies and also bivariate residual statistics, which I find quite useful to see, for example, whether there are any patterns that are not well explained by a latent class model and so on and all that you find in the Tech 10 output. And then finally, we have the save data command here, which is also optional for latent class analysis. It's not something that you need to include. However, oftentimes we're interested in saving individual class assignment probabilities so that we can see how reliably individuals are classified based on their observed response patterns. And so that's something where we can, for example, use this for individual diagnostic purposes, where we can look at individuals and say, okay, how into which class would this individual be classified given his or her response pattern? Also, if we wanted to classify future cases, then we can refer to that um, data set that has these individual class assignment probabilities. And so M plus, um, with a save data command, will save these estimated latent class assignment probabilities and the most likely class memberships for each individual into this file in case you want to refer to this later on in some way. And so what you have to do is you specify the name of the file into which you want to save those class assignment statistics. And so in this case, I call this data underscore three classes dot dot. Then it'll save a new dat file, a new text file that has the items and also has those estimated class assignment statistics. Now, now I, I have to go back up and um, explain to you why I included this auxiliary command here in the variable command. And that's because by default, M plus would only include the items that are listed here under use variables into this 
data file to be saved and the class membership statistics, but it would not include any other variables that are also part of the names list. So in case you wanted to save your full data set with all the other variables as well, or some of the other variables that are not used in the analysis, plus those class assignment statistics, then you have to use the auxiliary command to also include these variables. In other words, if I didn't include the auxiliary command here with age and gender listed, then M plus would not save age and gender as variables into this newly created data set. And so that may not be what I want if I wanted to have my full data set with all variables plus those new variables in there. So that's the reason for this auxiliary command up here. And then this subcommand save equals C probabilities is the command that tells M plus that we want to save the class assignment probabilities for each individual and the most likely latent class membership. And then that's what you can find in your saved file data underscore three classes dot out. I have a separate video also on that topic, how to save class membership statistics in M plus. So if you're interested in that, then please check out that other video as well that you find in the description. I hope you found this video useful to learn about how you can run a latent class analysis in the M plus software. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Also subscribe to this channel. If you're more interested in additional tutorials, check out the description for more resources, more workshops on statistics and M plus, and I'll see you next time.